Hi there, Jeff here. Uh, in this video, uh, we're going to take a look at the key idea of crowding out. So what is it? Well, crowding out uh, is a situation in which increased government spending and borrowing leads to a fall in the level of private sector investment. That typically happens when the government starts to borrow more money and that drives up market interest rates and which in turn makes it more expensive for businesses and also for consumers, for individual families to borrow and invest. So what can cause crowding out? Well, the key is to understand the possible theoretical relationship between government borrowing and interest rates. Let's say the government decides to increase their budget deficit. Instead of borrowing £10 billion, they might decide to borrow £20 billion. Now, you borrow money by issuing bonds and the increased demand for loanable funds in the market by the government raises interest rates. We'll show how that works in a second in the diagram. Essentially, if the government's borrowing money, it's making a bigger claim on the money that's available for people to, to lend out. If the government's borrowing money, that tends to raise interest rates, and it's that that discourages private investment and consumption. But there's also what's called resource crowding out. If the government's pumping money and resources into key industries like infrastructure or defence, for example, it might be competing, it might be competing with the private sector for scarce resources like skilled labour on capital. So that might uh, squeeze the amount of resources available for private firms to expand and invest. And also, if governments are borrowing money, uh, increasing demand in the circular flow increases aggregate demand. If the, if the economy is already close to full employment, that can drive up inflation. And a typical response when inflation is rising is for the central bank to start increasing their monetary policy interest rates. And again, that could be a factor that holds back planned investment. So here's the diagram. This is the so-called loanable funds diagram on the, on the y-axis, the interest rate on loanable funds. On the x-axis, the quantity of loanable funds. There's a demand for loanable funds, which is inversely related to the rate of interest. And there's the supply, which is positively related to interest rates. When interest rates are higher, there's a greater incentive to save. Let's assume the equilibrium interest rate is R1. Well, if the government's borrowing more money, the demand for loanable funds in the uh, capital markets goes up. And in theory, that drives up interest rates. And this is the idea of crowding out, that higher government borrowing can lead to higher interest rates, particularly in the kind of bond market. And interest rates in the bond market often act as a kind of base for what happens to things like mortgage rates. Well, the counter, uh, counter view is a Keynesian argument that says that actually, under certain conditions, increased government spending can stimulate investment rather than crowd it out. So Keynesians call that crowding in. So how does crowding in occur? Well, one argument is it depends when you're borrowing the money. If you're in a recession, if an economy has suffered a demand shock, for example, it has spare resources, unemployment is high, capital is underutilised, an injection of extra state spending can lift aggregate demand and therefore encourage businesses to invest to meet new consumer needs and wants. So well-timed, targeted fiscal stimulus can actually cause private sector investment to go up because of the impact on animal spirits and uh, and planned uh, and uh, expected profits. There's also a multiplier effect that if the government spending goes up, increases uh, in incomes, creates new jobs. Those uh, one person spending is somebody else's income, so higher incomes leads to increased consumption, which again can act as an accelerator to investment. So fiscal expansion and the multiplier effect can cause crowding in, and there's the wider effect of animal spirits and confidence boost. The government spending is targeted at infrastructure, educational innovation, for example, business confidence might go up. We call that Keynesian animal spirits. And if businesses are more optimistic about the future, they tend to invest more, expecting a faster growth trajectory for the economy. We also have to think about the impact of global capital markets. So the, the crowding out view is essentially built around the idea of a closed economic system, because we don't live in that world necessarily, and many countries advanced and emerging have access to foreign capital. So if the government borrows domestically, it is competing with private investors and there's a limited pool of saving and that can cause crowding out. But when global capital markets are open, financial capital can move fairly freely across borders, then the government can attract foreign investment to finance a deficit. Essentially, the supply of loanable funds goes up and that helps keep domestic interest rates lower. So we think, of, think about a diagram for a couple of minutes ago. There was the increase in government borrowing, causing interest rates to go up. But if access to 
overseas savings shifts out the supply of variable funds to S2, then there's no obvious reason why interest rates necessarily should go up. More loanable funds can be traded at more or less the same interest rate. Uh, so that's a, that's a really kind of key point. And another point is the exchange rate can absorb some of the impact. So increased foreign demand for government bonds, if the government's borrowing money, that leads to capital inflows, that strengthens domestic currency, causes an appreciation, which reduces inflationary pressure, uh, meaning that central banks may not need to raise interest rates quite as much. Um, however, despite access to global capital markets, there can still be crowding out. It really does depend on foreign investors. So if overseas investors uh, believe in macro policy of a, of a country, there's no real problem. But if they lose confidence in a country's fiscal policies, they may well demand higher interest rates to compensate for the risk. And we've certainly seen that happen in the UK in recent times when bond yields uh, went up quite sharply. For example, in the aftermath of the trust quasi quoting um, budget in the autumn of, autumn of 2022. So a loss of foreign investor confidence can amplify crowding out because borrowing costs go up. And an exchange rate appreciation can hurt domestic industries. So when money flows into a country, the currency goes up, that makes exports less competitive, more expensive overseas. Again, that can hit investment uh, and, and output and jobs in export sectors. And there's also a sort of capital flight risk that uh, if you have access to capital markets, it's fine when money can come in, but investors can move their money around the world pretty quickly. Uh, and if they withdraw their capital, suddenly interest rates can spike and uh, you know, governments have to increase borrowing costs uh, to prevent the currency from collapsing. So crowding out, the idea that if governments are spending more, borrowing more, designed to stimulate the economy that could have negative effects on planned investment by businesses, I guess particularly if interest rates go up, and also fundamentally if taxes start going up. And we've seen in recent times that the tax burden has risen to a new high, 70-year high in the UK, and there's some signs that the higher tax burden is starting to bite and cause some businesses to plan uh, less investment spending in the, in the next year or two. OK, so thanks for joining in. I hope this video made sense on crowding out. Take care. Stay safe. Stay curious. See you sometime soon.